actually lived in a little community of people who this person raised bees, this person raised cows, this person raised chickens, and we could just all swap goods. To actually talk to these farmers and learn more about these processes. Hey y'all, today we're going to be talking about sourcing foods local, which is really important right now, especially with all of the things going on in our country with food shortages, food prices. So I'm going to chat with y'all for just a few minutes about some of the things that we buy locally, how we source those things, and give y'all some ideas on how you can start sourcing those things locally yourself or even growing them yourself. Just some ways we can break up the food chain and start to becoming more self-sustainable. So jumping right in, here are the things that we source locally. I would love to say that we were able to source all of these things off our own property, off our own homestead. We are not there yet. We are very small scale homesteaders. We have the land to do so. We have the land to do a lot with, but we don't have the means to get things where they need to be at this time to have cows, have tons of chickens and eggs, have our own grass fed beef, have our own bees. So we do have to source a lot of this locally still. So many of y'all are in the same situation. Either you are aspiring homesteaders or you live on very, very minimal acres and you just don't have the capacity to do all of these things. So I am a firm believer and you can do a lot on the acres and the land that you are blessed with, but we do still source a lot of this. So jumping right in, first one and the one that I seriously value the most because of the changes that it's made in our lives is raw milk. So if you've been on my channel, you know we are huge lovers of raw milk. We do a raw milk pickup every other week and we absolutely love our raw milk. So if you haven't already heard our raw milk story of how we got into drinking raw milk, what got us there, the health journey that we went through. I have a video talking about my son and our raw milk baby formula, so I'll link that for y'all down in the description below if you want to check that out and learn a little bit more, more about our raw milk journey. But raw milk is just so abundant in vitamins and minerals. A lot of times raw milk gets a bad reputation because of things that went on with farming practices over 100 years ago, but raw milk from a reputable, safe source, sanitary source, good milking practices is so healthy for you and so beneficial. Our children drink it, I drink it pregnant, my husband drinks it, we absolutely love it. So if you want more on a raw milk story, check those videos out. But raw milk is one that I really would, if you're on the fence about finding a farmer, jump over the fence and go find raw milk in your area. It is so, so, so amazing. Not to mention, in the grocery stores these days, it is actually very difficult to find milk. And if you can find it, it is the prices has doubled, sometimes tripled in some areas. We get raw milk by the gallon for $6 in our area. It definitely can be pricier in some areas of the country, but seek out a raw milk source in your area if you have the means to and go for it. It is so beneficial and I don't think you'll regret it. So from the raw milk, we get four other dairy products. That would be butter, cream, yogurt, and cheese. So butter and cream are gonna be really, really easy to make in the spring and summer months because the cow is gonna have that really, really thick layer of cream on top. The cows are eating those fresh grasses. It's just a really, really, really rich, delicious cream. So to make butter or whipped cream, it's super simple. I just toss it in my KitchenAid mixer with a whisk attachment. Let the KitchenAid do all of the work there. If you have a food processor, it's actually a much quicker process, but my food processor, broke a while back and I have not replaced it. So to pour the cream in the KitchenAid mixer and let it start turning, it will first transition to whipped cream, which is so good. I always stop the mixer and dip some out. Take a little spoonful and then about a little longer, five, 10 minutes when you start, it will transition to butter, which is so, so delicious. You'll just rinse it, strain it off, salt it a little bit, and it is so good on fresh bread or anything for that means. Butter is so delicious. It gets such a bad reputation, but Raw butter from raw cow's milk is absolutely amazing. Um, I wish we had more cream and I could make more butter, but for now, we, we do what we can with what we have access to until we can eventually hopefully get our own dairy cow. Thankfully, we have a very amazing dairy farmer who allows us to buy quite a bit of milk at a time. I know some um, some farms will have restrictions on how many gallons you can buy at one time. Thankfully, we've been blessed in our area, so just do what you can with what you have access to. The other two products we get from our raw milk are cheese and yogurt. I'm not a huge cheese maker yet. It's a pretty long process, but I'm still learning. We love fresh cheese when I can make it, um, when we have enough milk to make it. We also make fresh yogurt from raw milk. So it kind of all depends on how much milk I have extra at the time, if I can make a lot of yogurt or cheese, just depending. Sometimes I have to give or take on what we're going to make, but that is 
four things from raw milk that we can make that replaces us buying that at the grocery store. So also so much better for you guys. Um, pasteurized milk kills all of the bacteria in milk, which is why many people cannot tolerate milk. Um, if we drink milk the way God gave it to us, our bodies know how to properly process it. And it's very, very beneficial to us. Many people who are lactose intolerant or have trouble um, digesting milk can actually drink raw milk fun fact there moving on finally is going to be meat so we have not bought meat in the grocery store in about three years and i'm so thankful for that because there's been so many ups and downs in meat shortages throughout the last couple of years i'm so thankful that we don't have to rely on the grocery store for our meat so what we do instead is we go to a local farmer who's about 30 minutes from our house and purchase our meat that way sometimes we purchase an entire cow we have it with some of our family members and we get all the cuts of the meat any cut you can want you can request if you purchase the cow you can have it with family member if you have enough freezer space you can keep it all for yourself we did a quarter cow with my in-laws last year so they each got we each got a quarter of the cow but that is a very very economical way to buy meat you can also get all the bones from the animal which make bone broth so there's just so many ways that you can get creative if you just seek out these sources and have these foods readily available to you in a much healthier form, also for a much more economical price than a lot of times you're paying in the grocery store. Especially if you're trying to get the higher quality meats, the grass-fed organic, and who knows if it really is that raised that way if you buy it at the grocery store. If you are going to the farm, talking to the person who raises these animals, who cares these animals, you're gonna know exactly what these animals are fed, exactly what is pumped into their bodies, exactly how they're taken care of, how often they are rotated on pastures, and that just is much more peace of mind for me knowing more so what I'm feeding my family than just going to the grocery store and blindly reading what's on the label and believing it because can we really believe it these days there are also online companies that sell really high quality beefs and chicken and pork um, I'll link some of those down below no they're not gonna be local but you can read about their farming practices and I feel like I trust them much more than blindly reading a label at the grocery store when we can't get things in the grocery store we can always drive directly to a farm and purchase from the local farmer nextly is eggs so backyard chickens have been a thing for quite a while now we were kind of late jumping on that bandwagon because we didn't actually have the setup and the property and so we've had backyard chickens for about a year now and that's not possible for everybody but you can always find local farms who sell fresh chickens so many people now are raising chickens and selling eggs because eggs are a staple in our diet i don't want to be without eggs so we have backyard chickens my dad also has backyard chickens. The same farm that we get our grass-fed beef from also sells pastured organically raised eggs. So we have several options for keeping eggs in stock in our home and I just encourage you to look and seek that out. I feel like eggs is one of the easier ones to find. If you are like very active in your church, you could probably ask around. There's probably an elderly couple in your church that raises chickens and they will be happy to sell you a dozen or two eggs a week. Um, just ask around. That's the best option for finding eggs as well as finding meat. Local eggs are absolutely the best. There's just nothing better than a fresh, beautiful, organically, non-GMO fed chicken egg. Um, there's just so much junk pumped into the chickens from the conventional eggs at the grocery store. A lot of things that you really don't really want to be putting into your body if you really knew what all went into those farming practices. So more, the more local you can get, the better, always in my opinion. Next up, honey. Honey, honey, honey. I love honey. My children love honey. My husband loves honey. They will eat it by the spoonful. We love honey. Going right along with maple syrup, we are not able to source maple syrup down here in the south, so we have to buy that from the stores. So honey is another one that's actually really fun to locally source. Um, we actually just found a new beekeeper in our area. Well, about about an hour from our area. None of these places are really that local to us. We drive at lengths of an hour to an hour and a half due to some of these places for our local sources. The closest one I think is 30 minutes and the farthest one is about an hour and 15, 20 minutes. So it's not like we're just walking across the yard. I wish we were, I wish we lived in a little community of people who this person raised bees, this person raised cows, this person raised chickens and we could just all swap goods but we aren't in that state, so we just have to travel to where we need to get for the foods that we are wanting to source. But back to the beekeeper, we found a new beekeeper in within our area, some delicious honey. He let us taste it. I got to ask him all sorts of questions about fresh honeycomb, fresh bee pollen, because there are two other things that I like to source from the bees when I can. We are actually hoping to start beekeeping ourselves. My husband wants to get a couple of nukes in the next year or so and start raising them on our property. 
the the beekeeper was very very helpful in answering questions that my husband and I both had. It's just so fun to actually talk to these farmers and learn more about these processes. Most of the time they're very 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 eager and excited to talk to you about their farming and what they raise and how they raise them. And it's just a it's really just a fun outing. My kids absolutely love seeing the bees and seeing how the honey was made. There's fruit stands, farmers markets are always selling fresh honey. Honey is another one that's actually really, really easy to find. I think many people already kind of actually do this, eat honey local from their area because it has been told to us over and over that if you eat honey, when you're your region, you're, the bees are gonna be getting pollen from the flowers in your area, which will help with allergies and just sickness in general. So that is another perk of getting local honey. So find a beekeeper, find somebody to talk to. They are really, really fascinating in their skill. All right, next is fresh produce, fruits, and vegetables. So thankfully, we are fortunate enough to have some land, have some beautiful raised bed gardens, which I actually have a video coming out very soon on our backyard garden tour that is new this year. So we're very excited about it, but we are able to grow some of our fresh produce. This one that is kind of difficult to do in the winter months. We depend on some outsourcing from um, the grocery store as well as Misfits Market, uh, another company, the online company that I get some fresh produce from. But in the summer and spring months, which we are in right now, we love to buy produce local as much as possible. So we went to a peach farm last week as well as a vegetable farm just to kind of go around and gather some of our fresh produce. Yes, it's not as convenient as going to one stop at the grocery store, picking everything up in one spot. But remember, you pay for what you get. Either you're going to source it locally, get better health benefits, know the relationship from, with the farmer, what you're getting in your foods you eat, or you're just going to grab it at the grocery store and go. So think about your health, your long-term health, and also think about shortages. I mean, if, if, grocery stores stop selling these things, where are you gonna source these things? You've got to turn to local sources to have these foods. So we source fresh peaches in the summer, fresh strawberries, blueberries in our front yard we can go pick. We also have a blueberry farm about 30 minutes from us that we go pick from. We have fresh potatoes in the back, tomatoes, peppers, squash, peas, just several variety of things. So as much as we can, we try to source produce locally. Also, if you're sourcing it locally, it is picked closer to its ripeness, so it's gonna be fresher when it gets to you. If you're getting produce shipped from across the country, um, two countries over, whatever it may be, however they ship all of our produce, it is picked way before its ripest state, so it's not gonna be in its best nutritional value if it's picked that early. You wanna eat fruits closest to their ripeness as possible, so eating local fruits and vegetables is the best if you can access it. So that's another one you can find local farmers markets in your area. Depending on where you're at, it may be a better farmers market or not so good of a farmers market. In our area, we don't have the best farmers markets, which is kind of why we travel directly to the farms more so often in our area. But we have been to some states with some amazing farmers markets. Every week, they have amazing farmers markets where you can get produce, honey, you can even get meat and eggs at those, raw milk. There's just there's farmers markets where you can get all of these things I'm talking about in one stop. And I'm very very, very envious of you guys who have access to that because we don't. We have to travel to all different places to get these sources. So take advantage of farmers markets, ask around, talk to people. Word of mouth is the best way to find these sources. And lastly, fresh bread. If you have been around my channel for the last two years, I am a huge lover of sourdough. We have sourdough products all the time. Fermenting your grains is how it was how bread was made a hundred plus years ago. There was no such thing as sourdough bread. It was just called bread because the only way they can rise their bread is having a sourdough starter. So if you haven't looked into sourdough and you want to venture into that, I have some videos on it, but there are also so many resources now on sourdough. It'll be silly if you could not find a good resource for sourdough nowadays. There's so much out on the internet. But if you are not into making sourdough, you don't have the time to make it, you may be a really big busy working parent and you just don't have time to make bread. Find someone who makes it. There is many people now who sell their sourdough bread locally, again, at farmer's markets. You can also, I think, buy sourdough bread on Etsy now and have it shipped to you. But I do believe if you have the time and effort to put into making sourdough bread, you'll be highly rewarded. It is so delicious. The process is just so fun and rewarding to see what you can create with your hands. But again, there are other options out there if you are not into making it for yourself. But again, find a local source because we don't always know if there'll be bread available at the grocery stores. Um, we just never know. And I'm always an advocate of being prepared as well as knowing your food knowing the farmer you get it from. You're gonna be much healthier, much happier, um, just a much simpler life, I believe, not having to depend on these big box grocery stores. And I'm not saying we don't go to these grocery stores. We still go to the grocery store every week or every two weeks. We still go to Costco a couple of times a year and stock up, but 
if those things were gone tomorrow, we would have ways to access foods that we needed from other sources. I will have links down below for all of these things on where you can start your research and sourcing these. If you have any questions about anything I've talked about or anything in general as far as sourcing local foods, um, leave them in the comments below. I just wish you the best of luck in finding some of these local sources um, in this tough time of our empty shelves in the grocery store and these high food prices. You can find these other places. You just have to get a little creative sometimes. Unless you live in a city with a phenomenal farmer's market, you can pretty much knock out all of these things in one spot, one stop. Um, again, I'm so jealous and envious of those cities that have such beautifully handcrafted, beautiful farmer's markets. And to end this video out, I'm gonna enjoy a fresh slice of sourdough bread with homemade butter and honey on top. All locally sourced, so delicious. I can't even imagine anything this good coming from a grocery store. So definitely look into some of these options. You won't regret it.